Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about real estate crowdfunding. And it's here to stay, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I love it. I know. It's just, I love crowdfunding in general. It opens up opportunity where it wasn't before. Is it just me or is it not like... It's, I don't think it's... It should be huge and celebrated, but I don't see it very often. Is it because there are not as many people out there or are you going to share that when we get into the show? Because I'm... I just I don't, don't think it's caught on yet. Ah. I don't think it's even in the first inning. That's even better. Yeah. Well, good. That's where I want to be. Right. Me too. <laughs> that's why we're doing the show. Cool. <laughs> I think it's... Especially for real estate. We all know what crowdfunding is. Right. And I think it's... the In its current form is really silly, but... We'll talk about that in the show. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. And as you're listening, please drop your questions into the comments section below. Matt asks, hello, I'm looking to purchase a parcel of land that was rolled into someone's mortgage for their primary residence. It has its own APN from the property with the home on it. Will I be able to purchase that? I could foresee the mortgage having some due on sale clause or something if you sell part of the property that was used as collateral for the loan. Yeah. But they still have the house and everything, so maybe they can't be separated. Anyone have experience? The best way to, uh, unfortunately, it's probably not going to be good news. You know, deals like that are cross collateralized, so. There's a, we've all seen this. There's a house and a vacant lot next door, and they're being sold together, and they're two APNs. If you're lucky, they're actually two APNs. Uh, and banks love that because it's just kind of look... And, and all, buyers love it. It's like getting a free piece of property. Right. Hopefully, the the uh, owner of the property was smart enough to separate them out, but I, I really doubt it. it. Sounds like... So maybe they can be separated. It sounds like yeah. they didn't. So is there a chance that there is a lean on both? That's, I think, the question. Yeah, and I think it's the same lien. That's I think what I think one lien. I think problem. the property's actually cross-collateralized. Exactly. And so how do you undo that? Uh, can you undo that without yep. them paying it off? There could be a due on sale. I highly doubt it. Uh, the best way, unfortunately, to, to de- determine all this is ask for a copy of the mortgage. Oh. And it, and even, in, even then, I'll bet you a dollar, it's not addressed. Right. I think it's probably a mortgage for the purchase of these two properties and that's it and that's all and when it's paid off you own the two properties i think that's probably what's going on so the so the end result would be if that's the case you have to walk away unless you want to buy the house too that's right yeah okay which you know we're not against that's and that's another (laughs) show (laughs) and another program so sit tight it's coming (laughs) i could be completely wrong until you get into that mortgage maybe there's two mortgages i doubt it I don't know. That's an interesting situation. I, I kind of like those deals. Yeah. Now you have an opportunity to make twice as much. Yeah. Today's topic, real estate crowdfunding. This this is the meat of the show. We all know what crowdfunding is, right? Mm-hmm. How would you describe crowdfunding? Since I this week I get in trouble for <laughs> for describing <gasps> the back, you know. What? Well, I'll story. give you one word. Like I did on the like to the other one. When I think of crowdfunding, I think of to for everyone to just kind of get your head around it. Think of Kickstarter. That's like crowd kind of crowdfunding. Someone puts something up there that they want to do. Maybe it's writing a book. Maybe it's, it's books. A perfect example. I okay. think it all started with books. Okay, writing a book, crowdfunding. So everybody puts in however much you know money they want to put in. Maybe it's you know hundred dollars. Maybe it's a thousand dollars. Maybe it's ten thousand dollars. Maybe it's fifty cents. Right. Maybe it's On 50 Kickstarter, cents. you can literally can do put that like a dollar fifty. Okay. So and then you know and then then on different levels you might get a copy of the book. And maybe you get a copy of the book and something else, you know, depending on how much money you kick in. They can they can kind of reward you or pay you back, if you will, in some way. But the whole point of that kind of a thing is, is it's like a, you're helping somebody out. That's what I think of with Kickstarters, the whole is it's the purpose. Charity. It is charity. I think it's literally a nonprofit. Right. So, but at least gives you an idea what, you know, just thinking about crowdfunding. Now, what Steven's talking about is... That was for you. Oh, nice, nice intro. Thank you. Uh, doing it with real estate. 
So I've got a deal, like let's say it's an apartment building, it costs $10 million, it cash flows really well, because I'm great at finding uh, inexpensive real estate. Which you are. But I don't have $10 million in my checking account. So I go put it on the internet, or I. what's been going on since the beginning of time is I call up my buddy that I went to college with, and he's he's loaded. So he's like, yeah, I love the deal, but I'm, I don't want to borrow the money in it. So I'll put like $4, $4 million in. Right. And so he calls one of his buddies, or I call another buddy, and we all agree. And I raise the $10 million through people that uh, I have personal relationships with, or family, or whatever. I buy the asset. Um, we Let's say we start an LLC, and then in a perfect world, we own it for just a very short amount of time and resell it. People who buy commercial real estate, the vast majority of institutional real estate owners, commercial real estate owners, are looking for their exit as quickly as possible. There's all kinds of issues associated with that. That's why using equity and debt together, can they can cause problems um, unless you know the outcome right before it's going to happen, which is a perfect situation. Anyway, this $10 million building gets sold for $15 million six months later, and we all split the pie up according to the percentages that we put in. And if I didn't put any money in because I found it, but I negotiated a 6% kind of deal to manage the asset and manage the sale of it, I take my cut, and then what happens is those guys never leave you alone again. All they ever want to do is give you money constantly because they got the return that they wanted, or a real good return in that case, 50% on their money in six months. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Actually, those are kind of our numbers. So yeah, a little bit less than that, but that's the example. So wouldn't it be great if you could get in on that with 50 bucks? You turn your $50 or 500 or let's say even 10 grand. Who doesn't want to turn $10,000 into $15,000 in six months just while I'm going to my regular job? Yeah, and I didn't do any of the work because I paid you 6% or whatever it was to do the work. I'm happy with that. (laughs) So that's the idea uh, of crowdfunding, and the Internet's made that possible. Now we don't have to call the people we went to college with or any of that and get into a smoky dark room somewhere and and cut cut a deal. (laughs) It's a great idea. Here's what happened. In the 20s and 30s and 40s, People were selling stock for companies on Wall Street to people who were living on Main Street and cleaning out their savings accounts, and it was all fraudulent-based. So the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, regulated, and then consequently, like everything in this country, over-regulated the whole thing. So it's making it really difficult. If you want a real estate crowdfund, you are generally put into two categories. One, an accredited investor. So you have to go through this process, which is loosely defined. You have to have, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand bucks. If you're married, married it's three hundred, four hundred thousand liquid, prove it all. Right. And then the other category is the rest of us. Right. And the SEC is protecting the rest of us. So there's two ways to get around this. Number one, and I'm not advocating getting around the SEC. You know, I have to say stuff like that. I just do. This is a tel- broadcast show. <laughs> Number one, have a membership group like we have with Land Academy, where you're in it for a long time and you sign some stuff and you understand it and you're, you're just not some schmo off the street. Right. You're not some a bus driver who uh, could potentially, without knowing it, really hurt himself financially. Right. And number two, uh, the second way to get around it is to not charge anything for it at all, which is what goes on with companies like Kickstarter. They're just they're in it to get the traffic to the website and get some notoriety and maybe eventually sell the website, which this probably happened. I don't know. Probably four times over. <laughs> so in good Steve and Jill form, we're doing both. We do have a membership group and we're not charging anything at the moment. Mm-hmm. So that's what this that's what crowdfunding is all about. We're taking the concepts of commercial real estate, which has long been around, uh, and applying them to lower cost, high margin real estate products like rural vacant land, ranches, and wholesaling houses. And so far, it's working great. We have a massive response. All There's a handful of people in this group, us included, who've been flipping real estate uh, working with investors forever, mm-hmm. and there's we have, we're not breaking one single rule doing that. Not one single rule. It's closed. We're not broadcasting it, and we're not like open openly syndicating Mm-mm. and raising money. It's a I we people not like advertising people contact us weekly to yeah. throw money at us. So what we're trying to do 
is to take that concept and make it so that people who are interested in doing this can go online on, in a relational database, watch these deals happen, and get real comfortable with it, and put uh, money in or deals in. Right. We have a lot of people who just want to put deals in, want some people who want to put money in, and I mean, I'm both. Right. I would love, there's some, and it's a lot of, a lot of it for us is based on personality. Like, I know who's doing great in our group. Right. I know who's not going to make, and generally not going to make a bad decision. Right. So, there's a lot of other benefits, like another set of eyes or six set of eyes on a deal. That's yeah. a good thing. If you got six professional real estate people in our group saying this is a good deal. And they want to put in money now, it makes you feel good. Yeah. The deal that you brought to the table. I can't think of a faster way for somebody who's new yeah. and really aggressive and bright to learn than in CRM like that online, yeah. watching someone who's 20 years older yeah. do a deal and how they do it. Exactly. And the guy who's 20 years older, that's me, watching the young person from a tech standpoint and how they think, that there's a huge benefit. It's a two-way street. So mm-hmm. real estate crowdfunding is awesome. It's just the regulations and some of the other stuff that's, that are in place that, that kind of stand in the way. But <laughs> I was gonna say if you choose the right way. people, yeah. which we, do, we have, it's a great thing. There's a company called Fundrise, F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E, that's been doing this. I'm not sure they're doing it legally. I haven't looked at it to, into it enough. There's a couple other ones um, that, that have been around for a while. Mm-hmm. So, But it seems to me, I think they're all accreditor, accredited investor-driven. Exactly. Because you have to put, I mean, it's a lot. What There's they want you to put process. in is... There's a process. The minimum... The minimum buy-in is like fifty to eighty thousand, which precludes almost everybody from doing it. Right. So we are in the process of getting this done. Actually, we're pretty far down the road. I'm excited. I am too. I, you know. When do you think you're going to be able I've, to make an announcement and officially? Well, we're meeting on, on uh, meeting on this. When does this show air? This show airs on Thursday. We're meeting on it today, <laughs> even though this is being recorded lots of days earlier than that. So <laughs> that's cool. All right, so we're maybe maybe uh, this time next week we can have some insight on that. The whole my whole goal is to get fifteen or twenty people in in the beginning to test it. Everybody can see it. Mm-hmm. If you're a Land Academy member, you can just log on and watch. You can't participate right. yet until we get these twenty people that are, have really kind of orchestrated this thing with us. We'll put all the completed deals that we have in there so you can see. This is all theory now. And you can kind of watch it happen the same way, uh, you know, ultra rich, you know, Donald Trump slash Sam Zell level commercial real estate people have been doing this for years and years and years. Only we're applying it to wholesale houses and uh, infill lots. Infill lots and subdivided land. Yep. Beautiful. How bad was that? How That was great. <clears throat> how PhD awful was that? That was actually not that bad. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've done it again. You spent another 15 minutes or so listening to the Land Academy show. Join us next time where we discuss why playing at your level is imperative. And answer your questions posted on our online community, landinvestors.com. It is free. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. You don't have to be hypersensitive to the PhD. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Please be sure and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our podcast. Like us and comment on what you would like to see in future shows. If you are listening on iTunes, please rate us there. We, we are, are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. <laughs>